Hey guys, my name is Michael Sipos and I'm the UF ISIS Extension Florida Sea Grant Agent in Collier County. And today we're going to learn about and fillet the Yellow Jack. So read the description, watch the video to learn more about this species. And if you guys can please take the survey linked in the description uh, for each one of these species videos I make. It really helps me uh, justify the time and energy I spend doing my job and my personal time actually going out and capturing these species for uh, these videos for you guys to watch. So if you could please do that, that'd be super appreciated. And we're gonna move the camera closer so you can get a good look at my hands and we'll get started. Okay guys, so let's get started. So here is our beautiful yellow jack. To give you an idea of scale, um, this fish is 23 and a half inches at the fork and it is 25 and a half inches maximum total length, so that's to the tip of the tail. Um, and the fish weighs 7.7 .7 pounds. So this is a you know, pretty, pretty medium sized individual. The state record for this fish is actually the IGFA world record at 23 pounds 12 ounces and that was caught in Duck Key which is down in the Florida Keys area. So uh, give you a little bit of information about this fish. Uh, they're in the Carangidae family, which is the Jacks, Pompano, Mackerel, Scad. And uh, the scientific name of this fish is Carangioides bartholomew, which uh, is described as uh, St. Bartholomew was the island where this uh, species was first described at, which is in a, like in the island close to Puerto Rico area. So um, yeah, so that's where they got their scientific name for it. But the Carangidae family is a pretty big family. There's 140 to 150 different species of jacks out there. And this fish can get uh, misidentified as different species of jacks out there. Primarily the bar jack, which looks very, very, very similar. They both have that sort of tapered front pointed face and sort of tapered back shape. Um, but the way you could tell the difference between the bar jack and this jack, they, they almost look very similar in shape. But the bar jack has this bright blue line that, I mean, they could, they could disappear depending on activity, if they're feeding, if they're excited. The bar jack can also go pretty black. Um, but the big thing about it is the bar jack always has sort of a, a darker black coloration on the bottom side of the caudal fin right over here. Then there's the blue runner. Uh, blue runners are smaller. You know, sometimes people use them for bait, uh, for kingfish or you know, uh, amberjack and stuff out there. But the blue runners, um, you know, very again similar shape. Uh, however, they they usually have these like darker patterns on the tips of their tail, um, and they'll be a little bit more silvery in color. This fish can vary. Um, the, 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 the yellow jack and, and coloration just depending on age and uh, activity so they could be sort of like a like a bluish silvery to yellow and as they get older their fins will sort of become more pronounced uh, yellowish like a like a darker kind of yellow compared to when they're juveniles juveniles will sometimes have about five or so uh, bands that will disappear as they get older um, and then there are the Crevel Jack, which, you know, <laughs> they're, they're in the same family, uh, Carangidae, but uh, they have a more sloped head and they have a very pronounced sort of yellow uh, anal fin that juts out a little bit more. And their shape of their body is going to be more uh, dorsal ventrally stretched rather than this sort of elongated tapered shape. Uh, same thing with the horse eye jack, which are a little bit more rare in these waters over here. But the horse eye jack will have a larger eye um, and then they'll have that, that sort of tapered uh, face, or not tapered, the, the, the sloped head. So they won't be as streamlined, they'll be more of like a, like a flat kind of thing. But I'll include a picture there. So let's get started on filleting this fish. Usually jacks are pretty easy to fillet. So just wash my hands and we'll get started. So. A lot of times people miss this head meat. This meat goes all the way to like the tip of the head right over here. So I like to make it an incision using that dorsal fin as my guide and cutting as far up as I can. And I'll do this on both sides of the fish going about, about a half an inch deep and using that dorsal fin as a guide. So the range of these fish is almost the default range for a lot of these fish in the Western Atlantic, which is Massachusetts down to Brazil. Uh, it could be that you know, the Gulf Stream brings a lot of individuals sort of north towards that area. 
but they inhabit it really just depends on where you're at um, you know I, I've seen these fish many a time snorkeling and diving uh, throughout Florida but it seems like more so if you're in a tropical area like the Keys you can see them more inshore but offshore and Fort Myers will occur a little bit further offshore so I did these two cuts on either side I'm gonna try to feel where that the, the, the skull stops and like that meat starts and I'll make an incision right over there and cut along the mid side and down. And I'm not really cutting that deep, I'm just still doing that like about half a centimeter, half an inch down. And then I'll go ahead and connect these two cuts, that dorsal fin cut and that head cut and start lifting the meat and peeling it back. So uh, these fish are pretty cool. They're really pretty underwater and uh, they can exhibit different kind of foraging behaviors. They could be, you know, solitary or they could be in groups. Um, but oftentimes they could follow larger organisms uh, out there. So there's there's papers that with their the Yellow Jacks Association with uh, dolphins and people wonder, you know, why these fish would follow other predators, but it's, it's, it's really to increase their foraging success. So they might eat the scraps of fish that, you know, Okay, sorry about that guys, but once again, uh, these predators or these these fish that are, you know, predators of the reef will follow other larger predators like dolphins or sharks because uh, they're, they're going to consume some of the leftovers that they leave. Um, however, there was another paper out there I saw that these fish will also follow sea turtles and they wondered why. And it could be that they are using them as like a mobile cover, which I thought was pretty interesting. You know, if they had another predator go after them, they could use that, that larger organism for a, a sort of safety. So I'm lifting this fillet, scooting across the backbone with the front part of my knife, probably like the front inch or two. Lifting it up, lifting it up, skimming. So there's, there's some literature out there, but not as much as uh, fish that might be a little bit more recreationally and commercially important, like grouper and snapper. So you have to search around for them. So I was trying to find some stuff about their spawning behaviors and, you know, age and growth stuff. Uh, I couldn't really find too much information on that, but I saw papers that show that they, they mature at different sizes, really just depending on where you're seeing that population. So fish that were in Cuba matured at around 12 to 13 inches in total length, while fish in like Jamaica were, uh, were uh, maturing at a smaller size, about nine inches or so. So I got these fillets. Boom. This is our filleted yellow jack. You can sort of see through them. That's a good sign. I'm gonna put them right over here. We're gonna get started on removing the skin of these fillets as well as deboning them. I'm gonna use my paper towel, make our surface nice and clean. Scoot that back, move my fillet towards the back of the fillet table or my cutting board so I can hover my edge of my knife uh, to, to make it more flush. So they think that spawning occurs from February to October and there were some reports that sh showed uh, that these yellow jack exhibited similar behaviors as permit in terms of spawning and how they spawn. So they'll congregate in larger schools and then fish, you know, five to, five to eight individuals will break off and they'll sort of rush to the surface. And as they rush, they'll expel eggs and uh, they'll do that a couple times. And this was uh, observed around uh, a, a dusk time. So I remove that skin and I'm gonna cut these Y bones out. So I'm gonna feel with my fingers where they're at and cut that out. Go on either side, trim that up. And these fish have a pretty good bloodline. So I'm gonna trim this up even more. So there's nothing wrong with eating it. Um, you know, it, it's just gonna have a little bit more stronger flavor. So I tend to cut that out if you're picky with your fish. So I'm gonna shave the top part off 
Um, you know, make sure you have a very sharp knife when you're doing this. And if your fillet is cooler, it'll be a little easier. You know, if it's getting a little warmer, uh, you know, you could wait until you're about to eat it to do this. Uh, after it's been in the refrigerator, it'll be a little easier. And then I'm gonna cut at an angle because it sort of forms like a V shape. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut at an angle and cut on both sides of that to remove that red part. So this is a nice top portion of the filet. I'm gonna do the same on the bottom. And uh, they're delicious fish. You know, I've never really had a bad experience eating any of these yellow jacks. Uh, more so I get them in the keys when I'm lobstering. I can see them around bridges and stuff. Um, but they're great and it's almost seemed like the, a lot of the pressure shift in terms of like harvesting fish uh, in certain areas has switched to these since, you know, maybe grouper or snapper might be close certain times of year. So, um, you know, charter and recreational guys will go out there and target yellow jacks. So again, going to try to hover a little bit more above that skin of the filet because that is where that red meat is located. There we go. This is one part of the filet. You can see that bloodline there and then we're going to remove the bloodline and take out those ribs. So once again, sort of feel around, see where those stop. They go pretty far back. So on this filet, I'm feeling those Y bones or the ribs almost maybe eight inches or so into this filet. So cut on either side of it. Trim that up, good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and trim up that, uh, the, that, that bloodline that you see over here. So it's not too hard to remove. Like I said, just cut at an angle. Helps to have a sharp knife and a cold filet. Cut here, look at that, perfect. And then cut over here. Boom. That's another perfect piece of a filet right there. And um, yeah, so that, that's pretty much it for Yellow Jack. Be sure to take that survey linked in the description and stay tuned for more Fish Filet Fridays. Thanks so much guys.